After five weeks of hard rowing through the Aegean, Dardanelles and Sea of Marmara, Argo 2 has reached the Bosphorus, the most difficult stretch of water of her entire journey. Here the Sea of Marmara narrows into the 30 miles of straits that pass Istanbul and lead up into the Black Sea, a journey against both the current and the prevailing winds. Archaeologists have long believed that no ancient ship would have been capable of making the passage until the 50 oared galley was developed the precise number of heroes in Jason's Argo. But Argo 2 is much smaller, with room for a maximum of 20 oarsmen. Their top speed, rowing flat out, is only about the same as that of the current, in some parts running at about six knots. The more welcoming feature of the Bosphorus is the ancient city of Istanbul itself, equally well known as Byzantium and Constantinople. It provides comforts and distraction in stark contrast to rowing eight hours a day and then sleeping either on the beach or the boat. It's been a long haul. It's uh, yeah, a long haul from there, from Polis. It's a sail some of the time, but not a lot of the time it's been rowing. It's been hard on our hands. What are the hands looking like now? Uh, a bit rough there with some blisters and things like that. So we had a very good wind. It took us from Chinakli to Erzak. We did 70. Six miles, I think. 24 miles and 16 hours. Just in, just in a, yes, a day, really. And so then we stayed six days in Chinakli, and so our, our hard-won calluses started to disappear. But so we've been rowing pretty hard since air deck the last, what, five, six, seven days? Six days. A, a good there. week of hard rowing. I think people are, they're tired. They've had a couple of days here rest in, in Istanbul, but uh, it's um, really exceptional. The flesh pots of Istanbul are, are rather a contrast to the lifestyle they've had on the way up. <laughs> yes, they've been sleeping on beaches. Uh, so tired indeed that a uh, couple of instances, somebody sleeping on, on the beach, has, another man has literally walked on him and hasn't even woken him up. And uh, conditions very cramped on board the boat, of course. Those nights we have spent at sea, uh, we've discovered that three foot by nine inch, nine and a half inches, there's a sufficient sleeping space for a six foot three man, um, which uh, they didn't believe before they started. In Istanbul, it was a very different story. First class hotel accommodation and an opportunity to visit the exotic tourist attractions of the city. Mindful of their lusty predecessors, who more than once nearly abandoned the quest for the fleece to settle with the women they met en route, Several Argonauts wound up at the famous harem of Toptapi Palace. Unfortunately, it's been empty since the 19th century, but the Oriental nightclubs proved more promising. Cambridge rowing blue Miles Clark was far too chivalrous to allow a young lady to dance alone. Legend has it that the beautiful voices of the sirens lured sailors onto the rocks. But the new Argonauts were proof against such temptations, affording some professional attention to the finer points, but remaining calm and collective throughout. The frivolities of the nightclubs behind them, if only by a couple of hours, the Argonauts finally set out with a stiffening of eight Turkish rowing instructors for the hardest test. Crossing the southern mouth of the Bosphorus, they passed the wreck of an oil tanker rearing like some vast sea monster from the treacherous currents. An added hazard in what's one of the world's busiest stretches of water is of collision with fast-moving shipping. Argo, without auxiliary power, was relying on the keen eyesight of the Bosphorus pilots and captains. Argo soon struck choppy water and was twice spun around, but eventually she pulled past the domes and minarets of the old city, picking up a helping countercurrent by the Golden Horn and began her northward passage up the European shore. By the time they reached the Dolmabachi Palace, home of the last Turkish Sultan until 1922, Tim Severin and his Argonauts were again pulling majestically at their oars, as if this was just an afternoon's jaunt on the Serpentine. 